Well, hello, everybody. Hi, hi, hi. Welcome to Huddle Time with Vernit. It is Monday night, and for the first time, I'm one minute earlier. Yes. So as you know, we travel around the country bringing you this show every Monday at 8 o'clock at night. And I started at the West Coast, and we were traveling from Seattle right cross country state to states all the way and now right now we're in florida we just arrived a couple nights ago and we're, we're super warm you know so we've been chasing the sun and we've been chasing wi-fi so welcome to huddle time with ronin as every monday we bring you a really extraordinary show so hello everybody i hope you're chiming in and as you're chiming in i really want to thank you for tuning in to american's beauty and uh, by the cosmetologists of Chicago. And as you know, every Monday, we bring guests on a weekly basis, discussions, thoughts, leaders, any kind of concern, any kind of relevant business topics that can impact your career and make it better, have a better lifestyle. And as again, my name is Ronit Enos. For those of you who do not know me, I am the host, Profit First Expert, and the founder of Salon Cadence Academy. We are a high-end coaching and training company helping high achievers, salon and spa owners that really value time, life, and growth mindset, create more time to have a nicer lifestyle for themselves. And um, if you're wondering who are we having today on the show, I am so, so, so th thrilled to bring in two are good friends of mine. I have been traveling in their world for, I would say, about 10 years. They have a, a magnificent show for you guys, and I really would love to bring one. Not before I'm going to speak a little bit about them. My first guest is Deborah Neal. Deborah Neal Baker has spent the, the last 40 plus years dedicated to the beauty industry a completely dedication, working shoulder to shoulder with her late husband, Edwin Neal. They develop a company culture at Neal at Neil committed to creating a workplace that supports each and all reaching their full potential. And I know Deborah, and I know that that has been her mission for all this long time. Deborah acknowledged that all businesses development is connected to a personal and professional development experience by every employee. The mission is to extend to all the salons and customers the greater and the greater beauty industry. Deborah continues to express her purpose of waking up to our capacity and ability to have positive and meaningful impact of every person we touch. She has played many roles over the past few years, yet her role as chief energy officer has been a constant. Integrating a well-being as a whole person approach into the business is demonstrated in the annual beauty industry conference, Serious Business, established 21 years ago. And I've myself have taken my staff, my friends, for the past 10 years too. Being self-declared beauty industry evangelist, she honors and advocate to all beauty professional in their unique and special role. Carol Augusto is my second guest, which I have known as long as I've known Deborah as well. Carol is, has been in the industry for over 40 years as a veteran, heads up Neil Corporation and Serious Business, an educational business conference for the salon and spa industry. Carol joined Neil Corp 32 years ago, is that amazing? And was previously part of the Aveda sale division before moving into the business uh, education. With years of prior experience in the hair industry, hairdressing, sales and education, Carol has deep insight into the industry educational needs and has helped build serious business into a premier business education and conference for the beauty industry. You know, in the beginning, when I showed up <clears throat> to the business, to serious business conference, I 
really thought this is going to be a great hair show or a great business show. I was really looking forward. I've heard so much about it. But not until the very first minute when lights went on and Deborah and Carol showed up into the stage, not until then, it wasn't as magical. And it's been magical, serious business show for anyone who wants to learn more and become their full potential. I can stress how important this event is. So I would like to welcome those two and with my really good friend, Frank Falco, who is going to lead our conversation today. And I'm really excited about it. Hey guys, so welcome, mm -hmm. welcome. I hope you guys liked my introduction. I know it was long, but I it thought- was long. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but thank, thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> but yes, it was long. I will drink- Embarrassingly long. I, I have read since we started. So hello, everybody. <laughs> oh, wait, are you having a cocktail? I am having a sparkling cocktail. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Cheers, love this. <laughs> <laughs> well, hi Frank. How are you, Frank? Welcome to Huddle Time, Frank. I haven't Hello, seen Ernie. you. Ernie, Ernie, I was, I was, I was, I was betting that you were going to forget about me. <laughs> I was betting. I was, I, was, I, was, I was like, I could see you having going through going through half the show, and then Bill saying, "Ronnie, <laughs> you didn't, you didn't cue Frank in." Okay, so I was waiting. Well, <laughs> now, well, I never forget about you, Frank. You're my buddy. <laughs> I, pre I appreciate that. Well, ladies, welcome. Carol, well, thank you. Thank you thank for you coming, for Deborah. Me. Thank you so much. And, and uh, you know, just a quick plug here. So January 17th and 18th is your event, the Serious Business event. And this it year is. it's a little different than all other years because you are... Virtual. Fully virtual. Virtual. Virtual, yeah. Oh, yeah, going virtual. And how is that going for you? Well, it's, it's <laughs> really, it's a lot. I've, I've learned a lot. I, I must have attended 50 virtual conferences and trying to figure out what were we going to do to make this different. So it's been a big learning curve for me, but really fun. We're very excited about it. Yeah, no, we are, we are excited for sure. And you can see that we are not, we're not social distancing here. We don't have masks on because we are in our serious We're in business, our bubble. Our serious business bubble. And yes. so for the next two weeks, uh, we're together working on, you know, we're creating. Connected, connected at the hip. Yeah. <laughs> it must be, well, it must be a fun, and you it have a a great... fun bubble. It what? It must be a fun bubble. It is. It really is. It really it is. is. We've uh our team has we've got some uh Ross Neal is a technology kind of genius and we have a few of those in our company so they have created really like created a studio we have a training center a physical training center in Hammond Louisiana and they have turned half of it into this incredible studio with the green you know the green screen and anyway we it was our first time there today and it was very impressive so yes. grateful to have such incredible people on our team <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that you know because it is you know having it run a digital virtual digital event as you think it's easy because you know we are in the zoom world right now mm -hmm. but it really isn't because you really have to find um how to engage people being in the zoom world for all this time so yes we're kind of zoom. Yeah, Ronnie, you've done you've done a great job helping us out. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Frank. Thank you. Know, I I told Stacy the other day I developed a Zoom cough before my vacation, like literally doing Zoom for eight hours a day. Right? You develop a Zoom cough, you know. So I was trying really hard not to cough wherever I go, so people don't think, "Ooh, right. ooh. yeah." <laughs> be really careful about that. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I, I would definitely be careful about that. <laughs> so, uh, you know, talk, talk, talk to us a little bit about some of the speakers that you have and kind of, you know, about serious business. Like what, what can our folks that are tuning in today 
uh, learn about serious business and learn about the folks that you have. I, I know that one of your speakers is one of my very, very favorites. He's a dear friend, Eric Fisher. So I was so happy to see Eric on, on the lineup. But if you could give our viewers a little bit of a feel for what the program's about. Well, typically, and, and we're doing it the same, we've always been really committed to bringing speakers slash authors. We have a real commitment to, to authors. Uh, we bring people in from outside of the industry. And that's always a part of, uh, a big part of day one. And then day two, we focus on the salon, the business of running salons. So um, I gotta tell you the one I'm most excited about, and I get most excited about all of them really, but Ozan Verrill, he wrote a book called Think Like a Rocket Scientist. I don't know if you're familiar with him, but you should start following. Yeah. He's literally, his background is being a rocket scientist. I don't have a lot of people in my circle that that's who they are. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he was a rocket scientist. And then uh, he then morphed into a law professor. And uh, <laughs> and he's and he's and he's fairly he's young. He is young, and he's yeah. and he's brilliant. But out of all of that, I guess what he's learned the best is execution. Uh, and I get his uh, his weekly blog, and there's always it's always so valuable. Every week when I get that, there's always that one thing that anyone could take and implement into their into their business or into their life, and it would it would make a dramatic change in how they do operate. You have like an ex do you have like an example of like one of those one things just so I could kind of get a feel for it? Oh, Deborah's memory is better than mine. <laughs> Deborah <laughs> introduced me to him and I, I don't know how, I don't know how the, the universe he showed up in my, in my orbit. And, um, you know, I, I loved, you know, think like a rocket scientist, you know, and cause we're always using that cliche. Oh, it just, it's not rocket science. And I, I've always thought that even about our industry, it's not rocket science. <laughs> um, I think it's more complicated than rocket science. <laughs> right. And, um, but I was on it. The thing about his, um, she, Carol's really a little more of the how, and I am, I've always been kind of the, the why person that why has always been my question. And he, is such a contrarian. He's a very contrarian kind of thinker. And I've not, I haven't heard um, a perspective quite like his. Um, so I, I find him very compelling. So for me, because he's a contrarian. And I think that we have to be contrarians, especially now. Because yeah. what we thought we knew, <laughs> And the way things are, you know, the, the current reality of the world today, uh, I think we should all be contrarians and, and have to be a little bit, bit renegade. Mm -hmm. So that's the way I kind of see Ozon as a- well, I mean, yeah. it's, defi it's definitely time to renew. And that's actually one of your themes on your website about the whole conference is, that, what did you say the uh, the words in the universe, renew, reimagine, Rebirth, it's all re, re. Yeah, it's re everything. And last year our theme was reset. So we're trying to, to you know, turn that around because we didn't mean it so literally <laughs> last year. Yeah, it's one of those <laughs> things you got to be we careful. No idea. You got to be careful all. what you put out into the universe because right. the universe, universe may listen and give it to you like <laughs> the holy. whole world. Yeah. Reset. Yeah. 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 <laughs> No, we really I didn't nailed that thing. <laughs> we created it. <laughs> well, it's nice to have the opportunity Everybody, to. You, you. I was going to say, Frank, that it's nice to have the opportunity to take the time for a whole year to think about who are you going to bring into the table every year. I I, I sit down and I just want to be inside your brain. Because I know what you guys do. I know how you go and how you go about, you know, picking the right speakers for the right theme and why is the right theme. As I'm, I sit down and I'm thinking to myself, what is the process and how you two together come up to the conclusion of, of the theme or, or who to bring in? I, I just find it so fascinating. 
Well, Deborah is really the theme person. And then and then I'm the how to make that happen. She's my dream maker. <laughs> yeah, I'm her dream maker. <laughs> <laughs> I have all these grandiose ideas and she's the one who, who, she's the executor. <laughs> we search for them together, but then yeah, and then we just make yeah. it all work. And we do a lot of conversations with the speakers too to make yeah. sure that they know who the audience is and to customize to our audience. But if you, you know, what if you're tapping in and tuning in and paying attention to what's going on in the world and in the universe, it's not that difficult. I mean, mm -hmm. it's not d difficult. The speakers and the theme kind of go hand in hand because Carol, she reads a lot and I follow a lot of people and I've all, so between the two of us, if you're, if you're really continuing to study, then it shows up and just like, I mean, listening mm -hmm. to, you know, Ozon and, you know, I've, another person that's had a big influence on, you know, my thinking this year is one of our guest speakers, mm -hmm. and that's Russell Brand. Which is amazing. Uh, amazing. Yeah. We're very excited. Yeah. About that. So and that's really, that Deborah is really a true stalker. That's I'm a stalker. That's the other way we <laughs> well, get I've been, following, I've been following for a long, long time, you know, and he's pretty confident, you know, he's got well, different. Deal. Yes, very. So thank let's you. call it, this is the word provocative. He's so provocative. And that is your word. I know that. And 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 he really is, is and he's out there and he's so amazing. So, I mean, I actually had a yoga session with him. I don't know when it was, like four or five years ago. So I, I, I'm i jealous. Well, I don't know about four or five years ago. I have to acknowledge that I was never a Russell Brand fan as a, <laughs> as a comedian or an actor. Honestly, yeah. I'm just telling that. You know, he's not listening. He's he's not going to be, you know, hearing. I know, I know. I know. Um, but I was not a fan of his. Yeah. And then I started, I started following him on Instagram and hearing things about him. And, of course, he was in recovery. <laughs> and uh, once I started following him, I was like, oh, my word. I was so impressed with his uh, languaging and his, you know, how he articulated and his thinking was just so out there that it, you know, and it's very, um, yeah, it evokes a lot of thought, what he, you know, and the people he speaks to. So, um, yeah. so anyway. it sounds like you definitely have an, an eclectic, diverse, yeah. thoughtful, intelligent group of speakers that, uh, you know, really, I think will help create a great experience for everybody. It's very Honestly, Frank, I think that that's what we need to have. We all need to have that in our lives and in our business. Mm -hmm. What you just said, what you just said, our speakers are diverse and they come from different points of view and they're, they are, they are there to expose you to new ways of thinking or new, you know, perspectives and uh, you can take it or leave it. But, being open to that. Mm. I mean, I think this last year has taught us all that I do too. from ev every, you know, whether, I mean, the pandemic, but look at the, the Me Too movement, the Black Lives Matter. I mean, come on. We all need to embrace yep. um, and be open. Yeah. And rebirth. Rebirth. Yeah. Yeah. Rebirth. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about your audience. Who who are like your attendees? Like, uh, is this just for salon owners? Is it for stylists? You know, like, who's this for? I'm going to say that probably 70% of the audience is owners and managers and about 30% are hairdressers. And that, that, cate that category is it's growing more and more hairdressers are interested in learning the because it's not just a business conference it's a it's okay. leadership it's personal development it's health wellness is always a part of our of our event so it's it's just growing mm -hmm. but it did but i'll tell you the the history of serious business it did start it did begin 22 years ago as really more 
design for the salon owner and mm -hmm. managers. I mean, that's where it kind of started. And um, it started um, because we, Neil Corporation is always kind of known for education, but, but kind of really leaning a lot towards technical training and education. We did these big hair shows are not big compared to what you do, Frank at all different. Uh, yeah. In fact, we, we, our hair shows were uh, product neutral for the most part back in the day where we, we went way, yep. we were very, I guess in the time it was controversial because we'd have artists, we'd have hairdressers from all over the world and we would, we would not really, we would discourage any conversation on stage about yeah. pitching. Yeah. <laughs> That's not what we wanted. And, uh, but we saw that one of the biggest missings was business acumen. We needed, you know, that's what salon owners needed. So that is, was really why, you know, we started serious business. Mm. I believe, I believe. And, um, one Go ahead. You go, friend. No, no, no. I was, I was just going to get one more, one more last question about serious business, and then we'll we'll get into some d discussion about what's happening in salons. And I'd love to get all three of you, Bernie, Carol, Deborah. We want to get all of your opinions because we've got uh, many listeners out there, many members out there that are truly trying to work their way through this time. And all three of your thought leaders, and I'd love to get some of that out out to the group. But just one last thing on serious business. What what would you say for those folks that haven't signed up yet? And it's seriousbusiness.net. That's where you can go. You can sign up and get your online ticket. Seriousbusiness.net. It's January 17th and 18th. What would you think would be the, the key takeaway that people would walk away? At, you know, January 18th, the conference has ended. Uh, what do you think would be like one key takeaway that they would walk away with? I have the same wish or hope or whatever you want to call it every single year is that everybody would leave with the mindset of, I can do this. I can take this information or I can, I can follow, or I have enough inspiration that I can do this. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, it's when you ask one thing that that's always been, that people walk away inspired and the inspiration is not limited just to thinking because especially on the day where we do breakouts, that's more action oriented. It's more how to, and, uh, but it, the how to kind of starts with that. I can, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, the how starts with the, the thinking, you know, so we give people, we really give people the, the why, you know, the how, the mm -hmm. what, and the what if, what if, mm -hmm. that's a, so. And Ronnie, you've attended several times over the years, mm -hmm. and I know that you spoke about the Serious Business Conference, like the first time I met you, and yeah. you've consistently, uh, you know, to, have spoken about it with such high regard, you know, as a, a participant, as an attendee, what have you taken away from it over the years that would be helpful for others? I would say that the most important, especially these days, uh, relevant for these days, um, I would say is how to change your thinking, how everything is actually starting at believing. And by believing, you change your thinking. By changing your thinking, you're changing your actions. By changing your actions, you get the results that you want. And that's what I've always gotten from SB for serious business. Um, and I brought my staff always. They were hairdressers. I brought friends that had different businesses that are not in the industry, but they are in the service base. And that is the reason why I brought, because it provokes and evoke different type of believing and thinking outside of the box, you know? And so for me, that's what I take from serious business other than eating my way out for three days in New Orleans. <laughs> okay, meeting all my friends and my girlfriends. All, I mean, I'm talking about hundreds of them 
um, and, you know, being, you know, getting dressed and, and, and just being a beautiful um, conference room auditorium. We, we had the, the pleasure to be three different ones. You know, you're in New Orleans for three days. It's one of my favorite cities in the world. So um, it's nice. It's, it's, a, it's, a good, it's good stuff. Good stuff. Well, Frank, uh, Frank, I mean, do we need to send you a, a, a gift of the link so that you can actually participate this year? <laughs> I would love to. I think it would be okay. great. Uh, I would love to do that. I would love to do that. I would really would. Okay. <laughs> so here's what we're going to do now. We're going to yeah. wrestle with, some, we're going to wrestle with some common issues. Yeah. But what I'd like to do though, is we've, spent the first 20 minutes talking about serious business. We've talked about your approach. You really take a, a divergent way of getting people to open up their minds, having the rocket scientists, having folks from outside the industry, having folks from industry. So then you try to get to more of a convergent approach where then people start to actions and mobilize. So let's take that approach to wrestling with some common problems so that, you know, our audience can get a feel for, you know, here's serious businesses approach to some common issues because as we all know, we've all been in the beauty industry for a couple of years and uh, some things stay the same and some mm -hmm. things are different. Okay. And clearly COVID has uh, added a layer of complexity that is unique. Uh, you know, there hasn't been a pandemic in the last hundred years. So we're all experiencing something new, but the issues that have challenged our industry are relatively consistent. They're just more complicated now because we have COVID overlaying it, you know? So like some common issues, uh, you know, we talked uh, one of the, the huddle times ago about a common issue of pricing and price increases. And for those of you that have watched before, this might sound a little redundant, but what I'd like to do is I'd like to, to wrestle with this issue a little bit from a serious business point of view, this divergent, convergent type of thinking. So what do you think like the, the rocket scientists would do and uh, to help people think differently about price increases? Okay, based on the resistance to price increases? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I mean, we, I mean these know, are common issues that we have to... We I know to they are, about. and I, I just have to say that I think that part of, at the source of the resistance of having price increases is the hairdresser doesn't always realize their value. And I just think that's been a constant... Uh, that, that's why we kind of go back to this whole thing about full potential, supporting in people and reaching potential and that I can, I can do this. I mean, when you look at our industry, our industry is so special and unique. There's not an industry like it. That where the people, the frontline people are the people that they touch hundreds and thousands of millions of people around the world. And what they do is, I think they evoke, they have the potential to evoke self-love. That's what happens to a person when they have that, that experience with their hairdresser. And, you know, we think it's all about, oh, I look better. But how do you feel when you look better? And how do you feel because of that interaction with that hairdresser? Mm. And... To me, I still think we're talking about waking every professional, beauty professional up, wake them up to their potential to have a positive impact on society. <laughs> uh, one second, I, I have to just not only agree, Frank, but um, there is, there's a comment on Facebook right now, and that's just so timely, Deborah. It says, how does, and I, can, I can't see the name, so I'd love for you to post your name too. Uh, how does a stylist determine their value? And I, I'm so with you. Uh, we all have to wake up, okay? So everybody, wake up 
now. I know, but the wake up, the wake up process is working on yourself, mm -hmm. working on your whole person. Mm -hmm. Okay. It starts with, you know, really everything starts with between your, your eyes, between your ears. Yeah. In your thinking. In your thinking. So, well, I mean, how do you determine the value? We can, we can talk about all the how do you get, how do you have price increases? You know, the how is great. You have to have the how. But we have to keep going back to this because they don't have the why. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah, Individually. How many people think they're doing it? because they give a great haircut and it's so much more than that. Yeah. It's really about talk about, so, yeah, talk about the why. Let's let's go into that. Because why is, like is a big talk, uh, I'd question. like to talk about. Yeah, I'd like yeah. to talk about this why. You know, Carol said something such as and I know Frank we you and I talked about it the other day. We are talking about, you know, we give more than a haircut. But that's awesome. And, and we listen to our guests and we are therapists and, and, and we are salon owners and we give opportunities. That all super incredible. But the, the one person that we don't give enough attention is us. So we all have to think about what, uh, why are we here? What are we doing this? What are we doing it for? And I just don't really want to hear from all of you that we are doing it because we love people, because we want to give people. Okay, I, I'm loving it. It's so great. But you need to give yourself first, because if you're not going to give yourself first, there would be nothing left from you. Nothing. That is why. So when you think about why, what do you want this company to do for you? When you wake up in the morning and you're going to go to work and you're going to put all your heart in, why are you doing it? It's not just because you love people, because you love money. Because money buys shoes, because money buys freedom, because because time, because you want to be with your family, because you want to enjoy life, because you want to drink some good juice, you want to drink some good sparkling water. That's why. That's why we do because we want to travel. You know, that's, because we that's that's why that's why for you, which for is me. good. That's true. Yeah, that's for you. But how, I, I'm going to go to to, to Carol. Carol, when you ask people this question about why, like, how do they react to it? Is it something new? Is it like a, like a different thought process? Or, you know, like, I never thought of it like that. Right. Yeah, I don't think that, uh, I think a lot of people don't realize what the impact of, they get to touch somebody every 30 or 45 minutes. That makes a lasting impact. Now more than ever, the hairdresser may be the only person that has touched that person, you know, mm -hmm. in a, 10 months or something. So I think that they still don't realize what an impact that they make on, on people's yeah. lives. And, you know, I've always wondered, so I'm not a hairdresser. I'm not a hairdresser. So all of my, um, you know, inspiration around this industry and the hairdresser is really from my experience of being a client. So I, I was a hairdresser for many 18 years <laughs> before I went into yeah. to sales and working with Neil Corporation. And that was what gave me my energy and my charge was that one-on-one -on -one with that customer and really, really making a difference for them. But I don't think that rings everybody's bell. Okay, the, <laughs> <That's mine. laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, and, and it I and mean, Ronit just Ronit just articulated, you know, the why for her. And mm -hmm. she worked in the you know the 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 what money brings, the independence that money can bring, and, and that's a that's a why there. But how do you get people to really think about the why? And wrestle with the why because again i'm going back to tonight we're going to take a serious business approach to looking at problems you know or challenges that are in salons and uh and deborah you you started out talking about you're the why person you know so like how, how do you get how do you get people to like think about that and kind of pick around with that a little bit 
And why don't people think about why? Do you, why do people not think about why? <laughs> yeah, Man, um, I really, I really seriously. I mean, Roni, Roni does it to me all the time. I mean, we'll have meetings. She'll be like, "Okay, now why are you doing that? You know, why? What? You know, what? Let's is see. It you know, we can ask why? the question. I mean, and Carol's will remember. Always, it's always been. Well, what's the intended outcome? <laughs> That's my favorite. That's my favorite what's, question. What's the intended <laughs> outcome here? So maybe, yeah. you know, for some people, ask the why maybe is, you know, it has to be asked differently. <laughs> like, what do you, right. you know, what do you want out of this? What do you want this to create for you and for your family? I don't know that we have enough or we've had enough um, of that kind of conversation and dialogue with staff. And I don't. I don't know that we've had enough of that in school. Yeah, I agree. Cosmetology I agree. school. It could start there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because it's no different than a lot of people don't get that from parenting at home. I mean, a lot a lot of people had a less than excellent childhood. And um, so sometimes it, it can the teacher, the teachers can have the biggest, can create the biggest shift mm -hmm. for Definitely. a child an adult student, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, of course we have, you know, we have schools and I think that the, the teachers are, they are the, like a, the gift, the mm -hmm. gems that we need to <laughs> acknowledge. Yeah, because most of the time when they start the cosmetology school, they haven't even started working on themselves yet. Yeah. And right. the other thing I said, I went back to that I'm a client from a client perspective. That was the one thing when I first got into the industry, I realized I was like, oh, my gosh, these hairdressers have never been client. No mm -hmm. wonder they don't know. They mm -hmm. don't really get it because they've never been clients of a salon. Mm -hmm. They, you know, finished school, went into cosmetology school. When did they ever have the full client experience? Of never, never. Never. Never and and an educator in cosmetology don't don't even ask themselves why. Carol, you're a hairdresser. You're an old hairdresser. You talk thank to you that. For, thank you for throwing in old. <laughs> <laughs> what were you gonna ask me? <laughs> hey, Carol, Carol, you brought up a key point. You just said it. You just said it. It 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 came out. And we moved right past, but I want to come right back to it. You said that the work that people need to do is starts with the work they need to do on themselves. I, I might be off on the exact words that you use, but you just made that statement. And I'd like, I'd like to park there a little bit. Why did you say that? Well, I'm going from my, from my own experience, really. I mean, when I started to cosmetology school, which I had always wanted to be a hairdresser. I mean, this will really tell my age, but my mom had wiglets and I used to do the <laughs> wiglets, you know, when I was 10 years old for her and all of her friends. So I always knew I wanted to be, wanted to be a hairdresser, but I loved it from the service aspect, even though, don't get me wrong, I was a really hot hairdresser, <laughs> but I would, I didn't work on myself that it was about becoming really good at what I, the artistic part. It yeah. wasn't about, you know, what if I, if part of theory was learning what your values are, what your core value is and all of those things rather than theory and then practical when you get on the floor. So. And I don't think we can discount the requirement Oh, of definitely being, not. Of honing the skill. Right. You know, absolutely. That's just, that's one domain of self. Yes. <laughs> but the personal development is, is a big missing piece. Even self-esteem. You know, a lot of people with low self-esteem go to cosmetology school. And don't want to raise their prices. Exactly. Yeah. But if higher confidence, higher self-esteem, so, it wouldn't it wouldn't be so hard to raise your prices. I, in fact, I'm going to ask Deborah for a raise right after so this. 
<laughs> so you know it, when we started out when we started out this call you guys were uh sharing with me that you'd like to joke around you enjoy life you like to to celebrate things uh, talk to me about how that that fits into this whole culture that you're trying to create because it's hmm. all going to come together here i trust me on this okay you're you're <laughs> taking us somewhere huh you have an intended outcome i get it um, <laughs> It's, I think that, again, it's the, how does the, we have fun. And I think fun and play is something that we all, we, you know, bottom line, we, in it here, we're, we're promoting serious business. And I think we take ourselves too damn seriously. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Stacy just joined in and she said that Carol definitely deserve a raise. Oh, thank you, Stacy. <laughs> oh, thanks, thank Stacy. I appreciate that. <laughs> and I'm feeling confident enough to ask for it. <laughs> You've done enough work on yourself. Yeah. No low self esteem here. But that's so nice. You know, the relationship that we have with money is is something that is very difficult for most of us. You know, it takes a while to work on itself to feel good about that. You know, we, we come from different backgrounds, from different households. You know, some some houses you were born into a family that that always fought about money. Some, you know, some families or you were born in a house that have a lot of money or not enough money. And so whatever you went through when you were a child, when your parents tell you, we don't have enough money to do that, or you don't deserve it, or you know, we bring that into our adult life. We bring it into our work. We bring it into who we are. And that's where the work needs to start. You know, it, it to get rid of the shame that comes with it. Yeah, and we so tell ourselves a different story. We need to, we, we wrote this story for ourselves so we can rewrite it. We can edit and we can. Um, I like that, yeah. Um, re, re yeah. We get re, we're gonna re. Re, re everything. Exactly, so you know, we are in the re phase now, yeah. okay? So uh, and maybe we should have always been in, we should probably always stay in the re stage. I think, mm. we're, I think we're not gonna have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> so here's, 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 here's what I would, here's what I heard, which I would say um, we achieved our objective is this. What I wanted to try to do tonight was talk about a common problem that many salon owners, many stylists, many licensed beauty professionals face and continue to face like price increases. That's, that was just, we could have picked something else. We could have picked uh, I don't know, any other topic, okay? But what I wanted to do was take a common problem and work through it with a serious business approach. And here's what i heard you you guys talked about you have a culture of happiness you know you, you take your work seriously but you don't take yourself seriously but the, the serious business approach that i heard is one where it start the serious business is the working on yourself that's the serious part that people have to get real with and get serious about because everything else will fall into place if you get yeah. serious That's about right. working on yourself, yep. if you challenge yourself to think differently, if you challenge yourself to step out, if you challenge yourself to get around other peers, other salon owners that you might be feel intimidated or competitive about or whatever, but you get serious about working on you and working on you may not be the technical thing about like a cut or a color. Working on you as a business owner and being serious about it is, as Ronit would say, working on your business instead of in your business. And it starts with being serious about investing in yourself. Yes. That's what I heard is serious mm -hmm. about serious business. And yes. being happy and uh, not being too, not taking yourself too seriously is a serious thing. Like, mm -hmm. like you have to be like, hey, you know what? I'm imperfect. I make mistakes, you know, and, right. uh, so that's a, a, 
that's what I heard. It's like the serious business approaches start with you. Yes. Yes. That's Her, all, all business development starts with personal development. So business development is, you know, tied to the personal development that goes on in a company. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and for anybody who's listening and anybody who's going to be listening, um, this is the time that there has never been so much more attention to self-development. And this is the show and this is the event to get really serious about being good to yourself and how you can create a better life for yourself, better career, better relationship with other people, um, rocket science, where else are you going to even listen to somebody, how to take action, you know, all of those things is what I love about serious business. So I think we just have to get serious about it. Yes, absolutely. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's a phenomenal, phenomenal it's a phenomenal. serious. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I finished well, my drink. I think, I think you guys have a great program. Yeah. Well, and we want you, you are, we will be sending you a link, Frank, for you to click on. Okay. I, I appreciate it because yeah, like you. everybody else, we all need to invest in ourselves in 2021. And it's an you ongoing know, we, thing. It's, it's a never yes. ending process of, you know, self-development. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for having us. We really, really appreciate yes, it. Thank you. Now, so we're we're well, going to have Ronin, as always. Thank you for for leading the charge. <laughs> thank, you. <laughs> thank you. Well, we're going to have the link for everybody um, to uh, to be able to you know just chime in and and find out all the speakers. There's a great website, a great landing page where you can see all the great speakers. Um, so come in. Uh, should we see if there's anything else that we can do for our audience? Oh, I would love to see if uh, you'd be interested in, in if there's something we could do for our membership. Uh, you know, we would love to help support serious business because everything that you're doing and Ronit's doing uh, for all of our members and for all licensed beauty professionals, uh, you know, we want to advocate and continue to support. So. Thank and you. we're open if there's anything we can do we're for all, you or you want to do for our like, you know, we pretty all. We're all in this together. Yes, we are. Yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. Well, that's yeah. awesome. I love what you have in the background over there. What What is that thing right behind that you? Is, that a bird? That is a, it's a stainless steel fireplace. Oh, wow. So. That is the coolest. No, but so, what's sitting on top of it? That's what I would I'd like. Uh, that's one of those is a it's a it's a stone um <laughs> it's a it's pieces of art yeah <laughs> you know, i just i just moved in here a few months ago so i moved out of a, a much larger space and i'm in a much smaller space so i've kind of i've never been i've got stuff kind of everywhere including on top of the fireplace <laughs> <laughs> it's the beauty of moving you know from one place to another so um okay well thank you i guess we're we're signing off you. yeah thanks, thanks for very good to be with you all thanks for thank that you. thank you you welcome bye, bye carol bye. Good night. Bye -bye. Good night. i'll see you in, in in the room okay great all right hold on one second